Hello there, and welcome to 5 ways that you can improve at games. As someone who's been playing video games for 90% of their life, I believe I have a lot of knowledge on the subject which I'd like to share with you good people, as that is what my channel is about, helping others get better. Now while this video is a little bit random overall, it's going to be mainly focused towards first person games or shooters and a bit of Total War, although it's all going to be translatable hopefully to other game genres as well. This video is also sponsored by Logitech, so thanks to them for their support of this channel. So let us begin and hopefully you'll find at least one tip that will help you improve your game. One and a half spins is my secret, but we'll get to that in a minute. Aim in shooter games is something that everybody wants to improve for obvious reasons. And while aim isn't everything in shooter games, it can help you get that positive KD and win your shootouts. Now, I'm someone who's worked on my aim a lot over the past few years or so, and I think I'm a pretty good shot. I'm certainly not pro level, but I feel like I'm always improving. Now, from time to time, I hear people tell me that they have crappy aim or that aim sucks, and I think there's two main reasons for this. Number one, their sensitivity is too high that they're playing on, and number two, they're not standardizing their aim across all games that they play. So let's talk about that one first of all, standardizing your aim, and as I mentioned earlier, for me, one and a half spins. So no matter what first person game I'm playing, Escape from Tarkov here, I'll make sure that my sensitivity adds up to be one and a half spins. Now how do we measure this? Well, if you put your mouse on the far left side of your mouse mat, move it to the far right side of your mouse mat, see how many spins that makes you do in a first person game. It can also help to find some kind of straight line on the floor in a game to use as a measurement. You can see I'm using this concrete border thing here. This helps me know roughly that I'm doing one and a half spins and that gives me my standard aim that I like and that I'm comfortable with in first person games. And I'll do this across every first person game that I play, even Mordhau, which isn't involving shooting. I still like to get the distances the same so it all feels familiar and helps with my muscle memory. Battlefield 1, I'll do the same thing, one and a half spins so I can get some familiarity across all the shooter games or first person games that I play. Even Deep Rock Galactic, a game that doesn't really require fast twitch shooting, I'll do this because it's all about muscle memory. Like any physical activity, whether it's playing an instrument, playing a sport, dancing, surfing, they all require repetition of the same movements over and over again to get better. And playing games on PC is no different. You need repetition of the same thing to get better. And if you're playing different first person games on different sensitivities, your arm and your muscles and your wrist never get used to any one sensitivity so they never really know what's coming and you can never really be that good at aiming. So how many spins do you do in games? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious to what the kind of standard for people is. For me, it's one and a half spins, but don't think you have to have that because it really depends on your setup as well. For me, I have the Logitech G640 mouse mat, which is 46 centimeters across. If you have a smaller mouse mat that's maybe two thirds the size, then one and a half spins will probably be too much for you. So you have to adjust for your setup. For me, I also play on 1440p as well, which affects things too. If you play on 1080, then one and a half spins for me is going to be a different one and a half spins for you. Because of the other thing we have to take into account, the other part of the equation in setting up and standardizing your aim, your DPI. This is something that every modern mouse should have as adjustable, especially gaming mice, but you'll need to make sure for the most part you're playing on the same DPI on all games you play. Anything below 1000 is a good number to aim for, 800 is pretty common, 400 if you want to go really low sensitivity. And if you're coming from playing on a quite high sensitivity with two or 3000 DPI, you're probably going to find this really strange and really sluggish at first and it'll feel pretty horrible. It takes some getting used to but stick with it for an hour or two and it should start to feel pretty normal. For me, I use the Logitech G502, which has a ton of useful features, one of which allows me to change my DPI on the fly in the middle of a game. So when I'm moving around my menus and using my PC generally, I'll be at 3500 DPI, as you can see me moving around there. When I switch in to play a shooter game, I'll switch down to 800. I also have a 750 there because sometimes I can't quite get one and a half spins out of a game sensitivity, so I need that slight adjustment to DPI to allow it. But it's easy to change between the DPIs when I switch into first person shooter games. Now currently I have three different mouse profiles for different games that I'm playing but Logitech G Hub has a nice feature where it can allow you to set up different sensitivities and keybinds and everything for your keyboard that just activate when you start to play that game. It's something that I haven't actually delved into using yet, I haven't tried setting it all up but I definitely want to try it out at some point. For now I'm still just using my three profiles as that's what I've always done. So to standardize your aim, you just need a very simple equation. 
First of all, pick your DPI. I'd recommend 800, it's a really common and good DPI to go for. And it doesn't matter too much specifically the number, you could have a thousand and be fine, you could have 600 and be fine. Because it's all going to be adjusted by the in-game sensitivity anyway. And that number is going to be different for all the different games, they all have different ways of measuring. But as long as those two things add up to one and a half spins or rotations, then you've got it. Like I say though, it doesn't have to add up to that. It could be two spins, it could be one spin, it could be one and a quarter spins. Whatever measurement you want to use, whatever you're comfortable with, it's personal preference. There's not really a wrong answer, but if you have too high a sensitivity, you'll often find that you can't really have the fine movement that you need to be precise and accurate. And you'll overshoot your targets a lot, meaning you have to pull back to correct it, and it's just going to get you nowhere. So you've got to standardize and you've got to play on a lower sensitivity if you're playing on a really high one. It'll feel strange at first and you'll have to get used to all the new arm movement and wrist movement, but trust me, it will improve your aim. There's also a really great free-to-play aim trainer on Steam called Aim Lab, which has a whole bunch of exercises for different things to do with aiming, and it's a really great way to practice. It gives you kind of focus on certain things, and if you really want to get better with your aiming, something like this, if you could do 10 or 15 minutes of this a day, it's going to add up and definitely help you out. And it can also help you identify where your weaknesses are and it kind of tracks your progress and things like that. So yeah, it's really good for a free to play game. So there you go. There's my first tip. Standardize your aim and lower your sensitivity. Build some muscle memory so that when you move your mouse two inches across the mouse mat, it moves the same distance across the screen in every game that you play. Now the same kind of idea with muscle memory we can apply to Total War as well with some simple motions and actions that you're always performing in your micro. The first one is the good old drag box which you're using to select your units by dragging a small box over them. You can practice doing this super quickly setting up something like this in custom battles and just doing it as quick as you can select each unit with a small drag box. Get used to doing this, get comfy with it, build that muscle memory of doing it quickly without thinking about it, and then you can evolve the exercise. Now we're going to select them quickly and give them an attack order. So it's select them with a box, and then quickly right click somewhere in front of them as if you're attacking an imaginary opponent. And then reverse the action and do it backwards. This sort of thing, just doing it over and over again for 10 or 15 minutes, it just starts to build that muscle memory and makes it unconscious that you're doing these things. They become habit and you do them quickly without thinking. This all helps you improve your Total War Micro. And this is something you can just mess around with. You can do it in order, you can start to mix the units round, select them in different ways as you would be in a battle. Try to replicate the kind of thing that you'll be doing in battle with exercises that you're focusing on. You could try selecting two units at a time and moving them around because you'll be doing that a lot too. You could simplify with a simple army formation. You've got a front line, you've got a left flanking unit and a right flanking unit. Practice moving them around and selecting them quickly just like you would be in a battle. You may want to practice this with dragging the units out at the end of the movement because that's what you do a lot too. Then you can evolve it a little bit more. Start to practice using your alt and left mouse button to move things around. Select the entire line and then hold alt, move it around with the left mouse button drag. And again, try and do this quickly. Get used to doing everything as quick as possible without thinking about it. Just move them around, just literally doing this. It couldn't be simpler. I don't need to explain, you can see what the hell I'm doing, it's super easy, anybody can do it. All you gotta do is practice this stuff, practice moving your army around because it is the biggest detriment to microing. If people don't know the controls and aren't used to the controls and don't have those into habit, moving the army around is a very slow and cumbersome affair, so simply going into custom battles, practicing with kind of exercises, again 5-10 minutes a day doing this, it's gonna add up and it's gonna make you a lot better and a lot quicker than if you just do it by playing the game. And then you can start to mess around as you can see here using alt and then control to rotate. Get used to using that control as well because it's a very important one for moving your army around. Being able to rotate your whole army or a part of your army, very important. And then you can evolve it once again once you're used to all of that. Do it with a full sized army. Get used to using all of those controls all over your full army very quickly as much as possible. You can do it against an empty enemy army, just a lord, just move around, just practice moving your army around because that is half the battle with being good at micro and total war. If you can't move your army around quickly, you're not going to be able to make decisions quickly, which is the other half of being good at total war. So just like aiming with your mouse and building the muscle memory through repetition, we're doing the same sort of thing just with more controls, a little bit of mouse, a little bit of keyboard, it's all going to help improve our total war game. Which brings us to the next point as well, hotkey convenience. So you know how in most shooter games that the right mouse button is your zoom in or ADS button, aim down sights, and the left mouse button is always fire. Those two are always the same. You never have to think about it. You just always know where they are. 
Well, we want to do that with the rest of our controls as well. Again, I'm going to start banging on about habit and muscle memory. Crouch, for example, is a button that sometimes gets put on the C key and sometimes it's on control. You really want to pick one and assign it to the same key so you always know where it is in every game, rather than just sticking with whatever the default is for the game. Another one is the melee key, as a lot of games have, and on the G502 there's a couple of extra buttons near your thumb which I like to assign this to, so I always know where that is when I need it quickly in a pinch. Prone is another button I like to have around quickly because if I'm running and I suddenly start getting shot at, I can dive down quickly as I have this assigned on my mouse again to a button near the left mouse button so it's nice and quick and easy to push. I always know where it is so it's always a habit to just push it when I need it, don't have to think about it. Another one is grenades, very often assigned to the G key obviously which is a fine place to put it, you don't really need to change that, but for me, once again I like to put it on my G502 on one of the side thumb buttons again, so when I need a grenade quickly my hands know exactly where to go to get that grenade out quick without having to think about it. Because I try to make all these controls exactly the same in all the different games that I play, whether it's Battlefield, Rainbow Six, Metro, whatever. This allows me to build the habits of knowing where these things and actions are when exactly I need them. If you played three different shooter games and had crouch in three different control positions, sometimes on C, sometimes on control, sometimes on alt or something maybe, you then have to remember in your head really quickly which game you're playing and where it is on that specific game. This kind of little bit of extra mental work, although it only takes a second or two to try and remember what you're playing and where it is, it still hinders you and slows you down from making good decisions quickly. If we have that, guess what, muscle memory in there to just do it without thinking about it, always pressing crouch nice and quick, never having to worry. It can definitely improve your effectiveness in these kind of games. And it's up to you whether this stuff kind of really bothers you. For me, I like trying to optimize my performance by doing this sort of stuff and building my muscle memory and my habit and assigning all my keys. I always find that kind of fun, which is stupid. But hey, that's the kind of nerd I am. I like trying to optimize things, I like trying to figure out the best control scheme and which way can be the most efficient to get things done with the minimal amount of movement and things like that. But hey, that's just me. Now we can also apply this same stuff to Total War. When I set up an army, I always make sure I have five control groups. The first three are controlled by the number keys that they're assigned to, and then four and five, I don't actually use the number keys to control. This is set to my lord and my caster. Four is always my lord and it's assigned to this mouse button again so it's so quick to press and I can easily double tap it to find my lord in a second because if you lose track of your lord in Total War, sometimes that can be game over. So if I forget about my lord for a second and I need to find them quickly, I can just double tap that button right next to my thumb. And the same thing with the caster. If I see a good opportunity for a spell and I need to get it off quick, I again have it tied to one of my thumb mouse buttons so I can find them quickly. Furthermore, I recently realized that I can tie my spells to my keyboard. I use a Logitech G915 which has five extra buttons down the left hand side. Now in Total War, if you press Alt and a number button, you can select certain spells. Well, using Logitech G Hub, I created a macro for this and tied it to those side buttons. Now, when I need a spell quickly, I simply select my wizard with the right hand thumb mouse button and then I can whiz over to my G keys on the far left side of my keyboard to select those spells with one quick key press. So some interesting ways to make shortcuts and to make things just a little bit easier and smoother and efficient with your mouse and keyboard, rather than simply relying on the default setup. I also really recommend getting a keyboard with these extra keys around the WASD. Logitech has a few different ones, I used a G915 as I mentioned. They're just super handy in so many games as they're completely customizable, you can assign whatever key you like to them. So in games like RPGs and stuff where you need to constantly be looking at maps or opening bags and inventories, you can assign those keys right next to your WASD so you don't always have to reach across to M or I to get your map or inventory. So just a small difference that can just make things a little bit more efficient if you're into that. They're not essential by any means of course, but they're just nice to have I think. They can certainly make life easier. Anyway, that's tip number three. Set up for hotkey convenience. Another big thing with games that I think passes some people by is the importance of audio and the hidden cues and information it can give us. A good example of a hidden cue is in Mordhau, because if you hear this, that kind of grunt of some kind, it tells you that someone has committed to their attack and you need to block. If you don't hear this sound, even though somebody's swinging a weapon around, it means they haven't committed to their attack yet and they're likely going to faint or morph or pull some other dance maneuver to try and trick you. So if you pay attention and listen for that audio cue grunt, you'll know whether the person attacking you is actually going to attack you or not. It's an audio cue there to give you information, as is the case with a lot of games. 
The sound isn't there just to make the game sound pretty or to be cool, it's to very often tell you something. To let you know what's going on around you without you actually having to see it. Some audio cues are a little bit more hidden like this one in Mordhau, but some are very obvious. Whatever the game, you should always keep your ears out because the game might have something to tell you. Take Tarkov for example, it's huge on sound, listen to these subtle bush noises as I walk through. So those little bush sounds, they're not a lot, some of them aren't very loud at all, but if you were to hear that nearby you, you'd know there's someone about. Same with running there, you can hear how loud running is. Walking on metal in Tarkov is super loud if you can hear that, and running on it is even worse, even if it's only one step. Listen to that one more time, hear the one step as I run over metal. That's enough to be an audio cue, an audio trigger for someone in the area to hear that. If someone's over there and they hear that, they're gonna go, shit, somebody's over by this piece of metal. So that's information for you to gain by using your ears and listening out for those little subtle cues. And of course, you will make all those noises yourself, so it's good to try and avoid them. When I come through this section, instead of running through or brushing past the tree, I'll make sure that I avoid it. Instead of sprinting across this concrete, which is also quite loud, I'll just walk across it. And when it comes to that metal fence, which is very loud, Tarkov has a slow walk button to allow you to reduce the noise you make, which is a good time to use that over that metal fence. So make sure you don't underestimate the power of audio, not only listening out for it yourself, but also the noise you're making in some games is basically telling people where you are and what you're doing. Obviously for these kind of games, a good headset is a great way to go. I use the Logitech Pro X Wireless, has some great directional sound so I can figure out where sounds are coming from around me nice and easily. There is a cheaper version of this, a non-wireless version, or a wired version as you'd probably rather call it. Who the hell calls things non-wireless? But yeah, the Pro X headset is pretty damn good. I know some eSports pros use it, so it's up there with the best of them. So yeah, make sure you listen out for the audio. Obviously, I know that's nothing new. Everyone knows to listen in games for stuff, listen for footsteps, listen for this, that, and the other. But it's those hidden cues that I think really makes the difference between a good player and a great player being able to identify them. Overwatch here, another game with a lot of audio cues, although a lot of them are very obvious. But for me now, whenever I play a first person game, I always try to wear a headset because there's just so much information in the sounds going on around you. And if you're only using speakers or if you're using some crappy speakers, you're really not gonna do all those sounds that are going on justice. And honestly, you're probably gonna miss most of them because some are very, very subtle. So along with practicing all the muscle memory and habit crap I've been banging on about, make sure you listen out because it will lead you to this. And the last thing I think it's very important to know with games is understanding the power of map knowledge, getting to know your surroundings and how you can use it to your advantage or how the enemy might try and use it to their advantage. Now there isn't a lot to say on this other than if I gave you 10 million examples because maps and knowledge is so specific to the game and the map and what you're trying to do and everything else. But it's the type of thing that really just comes from playing the game a lot. Or you can get some shortcuts by watching or reading guides and things. But really the best teacher with this sort of stuff is experience itself. Getting to know where spawn points are, getting to know where choke points are, where good pickups are if they have them. The Dennis Fong story, the Quake tournaments from the 90s and how he won that tournament, destroying everyone else because he used a particular strategy of knowing the map and knowing the pickups and things. That kind of map knowledge is super powerful. You'll see a lot of esports pros as well that'll tell you that their aim isn't actually very good, but their strength is their positioning and their map knowledge. They know where to put themselves in the right moment on the map to give themselves an advantage over those who would probably outgun them in a one-on-one -on -one shootout. And that's the other thing, even if you've got the best aim in the world, if you come into a brand new game and you don't know the map, that aim isn't going to save you. There's going to be people that are going to outdo you because they know where to go and where to be and where people are going to come from and where they should set up, whereas you don't and all you've got is your aim. But once you've caught up and you know the map knowledge like they do, they're all in trouble. That's why personally I hate going into new shooter games that I haven't played before when they've been around a while and they're fairly established and got a big player base. Because although I know what I'm doing, I'm going to get my ass kicked and I know it because I don't know the maps and they do. And even someone with terrible aim is going to beat the crap out of me potentially because they know where they're going, where I'm going, and they know that knowledge far better than I do. And until I catch up, I'm going to have a bit of a hard time, but it's just part of learning new games. So if you don't already, be sure to pay attention to the map. 
Get to know where you and maybe your teammates are going. Get to know where your opponents might be going, what they might be trying to do. Where's the favorite sniper points? Where's the best choke points? Etc, etc. Just like audio cues, it's one of those things that gets overlooked a little bit. And if you understand it and you learn how to wield it, it can definitely improve your game. So there you go. Five tips for getting better at games. Hopefully you found at least one of these things useful. I know some of this is very much common knowledge for people. So hopefully most of you will learn something. Thanks again to Logitech for sponsoring this video. I'll put a link in the description to all the stuff I use if you are interested. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I will see you in Zipfield.